Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today is not the book club. Today we're going to have interactive quiz. So grab a pen and paper because uh, you're going to be doing something with me here now. Something what no one ever did in, in, in the life. Like I'm the first one who literally came to this conclusion and I need your help to actually validate if, if the, there is the pattern and if this is true. So basically today we're going to talk about endometriosis emotional patterns. Yes. And there is no research about the endometriosis emotional triggers. There is, of course, a lot of researches how our emotions are affecting our bodies and uh, how chronic illness is affecting um, our emotions. But there is not even single research when it comes to endometriosis and emotional patterns. And I noticed this while working one on one with my clients, 36 girls so far, and myself. <laughs> so that's 37. So I noticed that almost every single point from those 10 patterns is visible when it comes to us girls with endometriosis. And I want you to let me know how many did you take, how many are accurate when it comes to you. Because it's very, very interesting, you know. So let's start from the quote. It's a quote from uh, Louis Hay. Uh, and it's from the book Heal Your Life. Let me read it to you. Many of us are now coming to understand that physical symptoms and illness often begin first in the emotional and mental bodies. We are not just a physical body. We each have an aura of the subtle bodies, including the etheric, mental, emotional, astral, and physical. Because our emotions and thoughts are energy, if they are not expressed in the motion, they can become stuck in the body, causing a block in energy flow. So that's the uh, quote from the Louise Hay, He'll Be Your Life book, which I really, really recommend. So what is she saying here, basically? Uh, she's saying here that uh, we are all energy, of course, and our, motion is our emotions is nothing else but energy in motion. So when we don't express our emotions, they're going to be blocked. We cannot release them. And they literally stuck in our body. And I was so surprised when I actually find out this and when I had my first energy clearing session. That, that was mind-blowing, guys, for me because no one told me that this is somehow connected. And it really was. It really was. You know? So uh, I noticed these 10 patterns. And as I said, no one ever, ever did the um, this kind of uh, connecting the dots and this uh, kind of research. So I don't have a proof. I just only have this girls with who I work with and, of course, myself. And I'm very curious. Let me know. Let me know how many points from this 10 uh, did you see in yourself? Okay, so let's start it. And I'm going to explain it to you how it this manifested in, in my life and how it does affected my health as well. So first of all is trauma. We all have some kind of trauma. I notice something which we don't talk about, something which we pretend is not there, something what we pretend we dealt with it 20 years ago. It's long time gone, but it is there in subconscious mind. It's still there and it keeps coming back because we don't talk about it. And more likely is a trauma which started from age 7 till age 12. And this is the period when you're actually becoming a woman. And uh, I notice uh, after reading the book of, um, of uh, Mrs. Hay, I actually noticed that a lot of uh, chronic illnesses which uh, affecting fertility might have a root in the trauma which originated from seven to 12 years old when we started becoming a woman. And it's somehow, somehow in some strange level affected our feminine side. So did you notice any trauma from seven to 12 years old? If so, please tick it 
and let's count how many i did if you uh, checked my um, video about my story you know that uh, my childhood wasn't nice my parents divorced so they've been literally kidnapping me and uh, i grew up with my grandma and after that um, i have to grow up very quickly because i become a foster parent for my own sister so that's pretty much the my trauma from 7 to 12 years old literally <laughs> another one another big one my dears is the thing that we are people pleasers all of us all of us and the girls we give too much to other people too much we give everything to other people without expecting nothing in return for ourselves we always put other people first people pleasers we really are and how it that manifested in my health and in my illness well because i've been told that uh, having toxic mother actually told me that i have to uh, try to deserve to be loved all the time and maybe if i uh, had the better grades maybe if i behave better i might deserve for love so i was trying to please my mother all the time and that affect my my mental health and my physical health as well and uh, then i had to be uh, you know be a foster carer for my sister so i have to put other people first and that means I neglected my body, you know, even when I felt uh, very tired, I keep keep on going, I keep on pushing because other people rely on me. So I never had this point when I can actually claim something for myself or do something for myself. So are you a people pleaser? Take it if this one sounds familiar, okay? So number three in our list, we are all disconnected from our body. I don't know if you can relate, but I can actually pinpoint uh, the moment which my endometriosis started to the moment when I disconnected from my body. Literally to the year, I know exactly when that happened. And it always happened when you disconnect from your body. Always, always each and every single time and with every illness, I guess, you know, because if we connected with our body, that would mean that we believe in our body ability to heal. And when we disconnect, we, we just think like we are separated and our body is in constant uh, war with us. Like we want to do something, but this body is not letting us, this body is failing us. You know, this bad body is uh, making everything to make my life miserable. Like we don't understand that we and the body, we are one. And this is very, very big one when it comes to uh, chronic illnesses. And in my program, I actually put Put a lot of effort from bringing my girls back to their bodies and to connecting you know we're doing a lot of hypnotherapy and we're doing a lot of meditation even mirror meditation uh, which uh, one people love another freak out because you can see strange things when you start connecting with your body so is this one sounds familiar give me like one tick if this one sounds familiar to you another one we are forced to be too strong for too long yes we are warriors seriously and in my life it manifested because obviously i i had to operate with this flight or fight mode you know living with a toxic parent means that you don't feel safe you don't feel secure so you always in this constant battle waiting you know for the punch where the punch is going to come you never know you never know so you are in constant alert and then you know life throw at me this situation that i had to grab very quickly and take care of my sister so i had to be very very strong so i noticed that we and the girls we've been forced to be too strong for too long and that comes with a very strange thing that we are clinging to this illness because this illness actually gives us permission to be weak for our ones 
And this is the mental catch, which you have to recognize and deal with. Otherwise, this illness will never, never leave you if you don't know that. But that's the conversation for another, you know, video when I'm going to talk to you about uh, hypnotherapy, all the primary and secondary gains. We're going to cover all this, so don't you worry. Uh, can you re relate to this one? Have you been forced to be too strong for too long, like me and all my clients? I can see pattern here, huh? I can see pattern here. Another one. We are all artistic souls that can't express itself. I don't know how about you, but I'm I, I love painting. I love art. Can you see? <laughs> and I noticed that we and the girls, we all have this artistic soul. We are all creators. We love to create. We love to share our creation with all our with the world. And it doesn't have to be painting. It doesn't have to be painting. It can be something what you're doing with your hands. It could be writing. It could be singing. It could, it could be acting. You are creator, and in some point in our life, we, we literally block this creativity and this emotion of not expressed creativity is actually still stuck in your in our body. You know, it's not an accident that this illness is affecting our reproductive system because, mind you, keep it in mind that we are actually giving birth you know, from our reproductive system. So if you don't express your uh, artistic side, if you don't give birth to your ideas, to your beautiful products, to your beautiful uh, music or to your beautiful words or your creation, of course it's going to stuck somewhere, girl. Of course it will. And that was mind-blowing when I actually realized that I need to express my, my creativity to actually benefit my health. That that was like, boom, light bulb moment at this moment for me. So are you? can you relate to this one? If so, please give me a tick. Another one. We experience some sexual trauma and we disconnected from our sexuality one way or another. And this is very common when it comes to girls with uh, illnesses, which are affecting, again, all our reproductive organs, that there is some sexuality which is not expressed fully. And in my life, of course, I could not uh, enjoy my femininity having a toxic mother, which was telling me all the time that I am ugly, I am horrible, my body is horrible, I should cover myself and basically you know i'm just disgusting human being so i could not express my sexuality so maybe you can relate to that it may be because you have like very strict parent maybe your parent was religious and even if you try to like dress up nicely or something you've you've been told don't do it cover yourself or something or maybe it was other way around. Maybe you've been expressing your sexuality, but then something traumatic happened and you just suppress this. Maybe. So this is something which I noticed in myself and in my client as well, that we somehow suppressed all these emotions and they're just stuck there, waiting to be healed. So if you can relate, take this one as well, okay? Number seven, hmm. this one is a very interesting one. I discovered that we have one toxic parent or the family member. Don't t ask me how the hell is this connected, but I just discovered that it is. It, it is impossible that over 36 uh, girls who I work with by accident got exactly the same patterns, emotional patterns. I don't think is a coincidence. I really think that this should be studied further because, you know, there is connection there definitely, definitely. So my one toxic parent was obviously my toxic mother, <laughs> narcissist mother, and that affected me so, so, so badly uh, in every way, in every way, guys. 
So who was your toxic parent or the family member? Because that can be family member who we, we grew up close to. It could be sibling. It could be uncle, auntie. It could be anyone. But, you know, majority of us have this one toxic parent. So if you relate, take in this one. Okay. So the number eight we think that we are not enough mm -hmm. and this is kind of sad and this is kind of big because it took me over seven months to reprogram myself i did the hypnotherapy and i did normal therapy as well to understand that i am enough and i always was and i always will be in my entire life and a lot of girls from the who are suffering from chronic illnesses there is this big like lack of self love because if there were enough self love you would actually make step back and take time to heal but you know we are keep on going in life and we we don't even hear our body when our body is whispering and then we have to hear it when our body is screaming and not enough means so much that you are not enough of for you know having attention to having a love and all this is not expressed like we never express that I actually did when I had the therapy. So I expressed that I am not enough and this only that way it actually helped me to uh, move forward and heal because healing happens in every platform, in, in many different layers, you know, on the healing and everything is connected because we are mind, body and the spirit. We are like Trinity. And you cannot just heal one pattern, you have to heal all of them. Yeah, and number nine, we've got some need for attention, which is all connected, as you can see, you know, this toxic parent and uh, this need to be expressed and the need to be heard. And the need for attention is always big because I found out it was very hard for my girls uh, to uh, face the truth that this chronic illness is actually giving them something because you might think like what this illness is giving me your life it's giving me headaches it's giving me pain it makes my life miserable but actually if you think about it if you've been forced to be too strong for too long and this illness actually gives you attention because when you're sick the people who's been ignoring you so far might be a little bit better for you like my mother visits me only once in the hospital when I've been, you know, in the hospital when I had my surgery. But I was always hoping she's going to come when I'm sick, you know, always. So this need for attention was there in the moment when the chronic illness was always there. OK, and this is so important because when we heal this need for attention, like when we acknowledge, OK, I'm craving this attention for the people I love but i can give this attention myself i can find it in myself then our illness we we disconnecting from our illness because we don't need the illness anymore you know to serve as as an excuse for other people to uh, connect with us to ask us how you doing are you feeling okay do you need something they would never say that otherwise you know so let me know can you relate to that and can you see it in yourself i'm very very curious and the last one which one sounds familiar this is the last thing which i think i found the pattern there i found the pattern the another interesting thing is that uh, maybe not majority but let's say 50% of the girls with who I work with are the eldest sisters as well. So let me know, are you the eldest sister? Let me know what you think. This is actually based on science because if you Google a body cell memory, you will find out that our body is actually 
actually storing the memory, the bad memory, the trauma, and every every single of our memories is actually affecting our illness, affecting our body, and they are contributing factors to our illness. So I hope this video helps a little bit because, guys, you need to be aware to change something you need to be aware if you don't know that this can actually be connected with this how how the hell can you change it you know what i mean so i make this video because maybe someone can recognize something and then all of the sudden something gonna click and it will be easier for you to heal so please let me know in the comment section below which one of these points is actually uh, relatable to you and what you think. Uh, can our uh, memories can actually be expressed in our bodies? Did you have this moment when, when you feel like uh, something, for example, you're, you're caring too much? I really recommend you to get this book, uh, Healing Your Life by Louise Hay because it's absolutely mind blowing. And what she cover in this book? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another book club just to cover this book. So I'm not gonna spoiler alert this video. So that's everything for me today. As always, I'm gonna see you in Monday in an amazing video where I'm gonna to cook. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out because I cannot cook, but you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh so much. That's why I'm gonna post it. So I'm going to see you in Monday. And as always, I love you so, so much. And thank you for being here. Bye.